First song will be number 335. <clears throat> number 335. If the skies above you are gray, you are feeling so Number 535. Number 535. <clears throat> sing to me, oh, heaven, sing that song.
let's pray. Lord, thank you for this day. We can bless us with and we thank you for everybody that can, can come out tonight. Pray that we take this lesson and use it in our everyday lives, Lord, and we pray that we we can do all these things pleasing in your sight. Thank you for this great day and thank you for your son to sit down on the cross. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Seek ye first. Seek ye first. Scripture reading will come from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 57 through 58. 1 Corinthians 15, 57 to 58. But thanks be to God, who gives us the glory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Number 50, Amazing Grace. Number 50, first and fourth verses.
Invitation song will be page 588. Page 588. Song before the message will be page 525. First and third center to 525. If you would like to at this time, you may stand. Good. Let us sing. If for the price we ask forgiven after our labors are Top of your head, whenever you, whenever you give him the name David Payton, I probably say the first thing is his famous saying when he first gets up on stage. He'll say, "There's no better, a better place in the world to be than Lafayette Church of Christ." Amen. The second thing I probably say, uh, believe it or not, would probably be rat poison because we know David mentions that rat poison is 99% food and that 0.1% is the poison. And if I was to say, Jesus said, this ye do in remembrance of me, the first person you'd probably think of would be Brother J.L. Because he says it constantly. And I say that because these things are said consistently. And consistency is a thing that whenever, you, whenever it's brought to you and it's mentioned over and over and over again, it gets drilled in your head. And this is a good thing because the more you're hearing something, the more it sticks with you. The definition of consistency would be acting or done in the same way. And some more words, some synonyms for consistent is steady, stable, and constant. I want to read that verse that uh, Jackson read for us earlier, which was 1 Corinthians 15, 57, and 58. And it says, But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always, abounding in the work of the Lord, for so much as ye know that your labor is not done in vain. The words in here says, steadfast, unmovable, and always. So I want to talk about being a consistent Christian, being steadfast, unmovable, in the work of the Lord. Being a consistent Christian means that when people see you, they should, be able to see, they should be able to see the light shine through you. That's a question that you get asked whenever people see me. Do they see my light shining or can they see Jesus through me? And be an example to, be an example to these people that are lost and that don't, that don't know 
the scripture or the Lord's work or not reading their Bible consistently. And so they can see you and they say, I can see Jesus through him and he's an, you're being an example for the people that, that doesn't uh, come to church often. Um, another thing is to read your Bible more. Read your Bible consistently. Try to read your Bible every day and make it a habit because when you read your Bible, the more you understand. The more you understand, the more you'll be ready to answer questions or when or when Jesus is asked about it, you'll be able to you know, give them an explanation about it without even thinking because you've been reading your Bible and you've been getting familiar with some of the scriptures and you start to quote scriptures without even knowing because you're consistently reading your Bible and you're consistently wanting to be a better Christian. And the more you read your Bible, the more you understand, the more your light shines, the brighter you'll be, the more people will be able to see Christ through you. Um, and the more people will be able to see Jesus do. I want to read John 14, 6. John 14, verse 6. Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. When you think about the goal of a Christian, what is the goal of a Christian? It's to make it to heaven. And that's what we all want to do, make it to heaven. And that's what God wants us to do, is make it to heaven. And we want to try to bring as many people as we can with us to heaven. And Jesus says that no man cometh unto the Father but by me. So that's the path. That's the way to God is through Jesus Christ. God's already set down the way for to get to uh, heaven, but that's through Jesus Christ. And we can't do it without him. Um, I want to read... Uh, Philippians 4, 6. Philippians 4, 6. So, we, so, so far, to be a consistent Christian, we want to do things like read our Bible. Uh, we want to be an example. And here this says, Corinthians 4, 6. No, Philippians 4, 6. Be careful for nothing but in everything by the prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known unto God. This is saying that, or I want to say that another good thing to be, continue to be a consistent Christian is to pray. And pray like, just, just pray consistently. Because prayer is a relationship with God. That's your way of talking about. When I was young, I can remember, when I was about what, nine years old, I was probably, I was probably nine or ten. And I remember prayer being one of my ways of like, I knew this was my way of talking to God. And this is my relationship with God, so I would ask for things. And I was nine, so I would I can remember three things that I used to ask for when I was that young, and it'd be uh, I'd pray about taxes, I'd pray about uh, let's see, I'd ask God for taxes, I'd ask because I didn't understand what taxes were, but I'd always hear people complain about it around me. So I was like, you know, I'm gonna need to pray for this because I don't understand what this is. And I would ask God, uh, help me find a good insurance company. I didn't know what insurance was either. But I knew that this is what people would complain about. So I would be my first thing to do is to pray about it. And then the last thing I did was pray um, to find a zip code. Because I didn't understand what a zip code was. But not, now that I know what it is, I don't, I don't know. But that, was, that, but that was my first instinct to do was to pray. Because prayer is was my way of talking to God and my relationship with God. And keeping me close uh, to him. So that's what I wanted to do first, was pray about it, because I knew he could help me. And this, uh, let me read Mark 11, 24. Mark chapter 11, verse 24. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. That's saying, whenever you pray, believe that you already have it. Pray like you've already got what you want and what you're asking for, because prayer is that strong. And... Uh, and if you believe that you, if you pray for it, then God says, believe that you have it. And then let me read James 5, 16. It says, confess your faults one to another and pray for one another. Now, this is a big one because you need to be praying for each other to encourage each other, lift each other up. Because whenever you're feeling down or whenever you, you're going through something, and you know, you may not know what people are going through because people go through everything. People go through a lot that you don't know of, but encouraging them and trying to uplift them is a good way to keep them in the right path of 
trying to make it to heaven. And us as Christians, you know, being a consistent Christian, praying for each other and, and, bust and helping each other is, is a good way to, to maintain being a consistent Christian. Let me finish reading the verse. That ye may be healed, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. So prayer availeth much. Prayer is your relationship with God, and you shouldn't worry about what other people, you know, it's, it's what you want from God. You know, it's between you and God, and you shouldn't have to worry about what you pray for because it's what you want. You know, it's all about you, and it's all about uh, God, and y'all the only two that knows what each other wants. So prayer is a strong, strong thing to have being a Christian because it builds you up, and, and if you pray for other people, you can build other people up as well. Um, and prayer, you know, brings you closer to God. Now let me read First Chronicles sixteen eleven. Seek the Lord in His strength. Seek His face continually. Seek His face continually, which can be another synonym for consistently. So you want to seek. So whenever you do something, you want to ask yourself: Am I doing this for God, or am I doing this in a way that God would want me to do it? And and when I'm whatever you're about to do. Are you putting God first, no matter what you do? That's something that you need to, that's always a good reminder to do, is keep God first in everything you do. Especially if you want to be a consistent Christian, you want your light to shine so people can see it, see you, see Christ through you. So we got to remember to do that. And strength, and, and whenever you pray, ask for whatever you want. If you want to have a bigger faith in God, pray for more faith. If you want more strength whenever you're struggling or you feel down, pray for more strength. Or whatever, it's whatever you want. Strength comes from God always, and we should look to him for it always. God loves each and every one of us, and, and he wants us to come to heaven, and he wants us to go to heaven. You know, he laid down that path, which is Jesus Christ. You cannot get to heaven without knowing Jesus Christ. And the goal, the goal of a Christian is to get to heaven, and we want to bring as many people as we can to heaven with us. And we all need to encourage one another because whenever, you know, encouragement is always a good thing to have because whenever you feel like you're alone and you're by yourself, you're not. God's always with you, first of all. And second of all, you got all these brothers and sisters around you that are here to help you and uplift you and edify you to, to get, uh, reach that goal of getting to heaven. So you're never alone. And if we always keep God first, we're always moving in the right direction. That's, that's always true because... That's the reason we're here tonight. That's the reason you come on Sunday morning. That's the reason you come on Wednesday. That's the reason you read your Bible. That's the reason you pray because you want to make it to heaven. And, and this is all trying to get in that right. And this is all going towards the right direction. Um, practice being a consistent Christian. Pray more. Uh, read your Bible more. Ask for faith. Ask for strength. Um, ask for anything that you need. Um, and and you just want to you want to do these things to to keep yourself on the right track for whenever you're feeling like you're not on the right track or you're feeling like you're struggling or you're going through something you uh you keep doing these things to encourage yourself and i really want you to try to pray more to to better your relationship with god and i want you to uh to be an example to other christians be an influence on eyes uh, that, that are watching you that you may not know are watching. Like when I was a kid and I was uh, you know, watching all the adults complain about taxes and, and insurance, I was, that's what I did. So you never know who's watching. You never know uh, what they see through you. Do they see Jesus through you? Do even the little ones, do they see Jesus through you? Do they, they see the example that you want them to see whenever they see you? These are questions you, get, you know, have to ask yourself. Are you a good influence on, on people around you and on little ones and on ones that are lost out in the world whenever they see you do they see Jesus do you do, they, do you make them want to go to church want to follow God's will and do what he wants you do what uh, God would want them to do and what you want to do as well but all these things to become a good Christian so you so you want to continue to grow as a Christian and uh, just become the best Christian that we could possibly be so if you are here tonight and you uh, need encouragement or you want to start, or you're already being a good Christian, but you want to continue to grow and be 
a better Christian each and every day, day by day, a consistent Christian, and you need encouragement, you can come right now and see how we stand and sing. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood. in heaven rejoice tonight and we rejoice with them as three have come forward and made request brother Joey Durham comes saying that he said and done things that he's not proud of as a Christian and he wants the prayers of the church and he wants forgiveness of sins uh, strength to be a better Christian uh, Annabeth McClure comes saying that I have sinned and I, I want to ask for prayers and forgiveness I've said and done things I'm not proud of and I, I want to be assured that that uh, that heaven is my home and that's signed Annabeth McClure and then Olivia Payden comes saying that I've done things that I'm not proud of and and shouldn't have done them I let the world come between my relationship with God and I need the prayers to help me be a better Christian and I so that I will know that heaven is going to be my home it's uh, it's always a, a very heart-touching thing when individuals respond to the invitation. But when someone uh, younger does it, uh, it's even more touching, not to take away from anything, but we appreciate these young people so very much. And uh, what a great example they are to, to this wonderful congregation. And, and we love them, and we want to have a prayer for them. And I'm going to ask Brother Don if, if he would at this time to come and, and pray at this time. Let's all bow in prayer on behalf of these young, young people. Heavenly Father, we approach your throne of grace this evening on behalf of these three who have had courage in their heart, who have had repentance in their heart, and have come forward confessing these sins. Father, we're so thankful for them and their good example that they have. Father, we realize that they come forward saying they have sinned and that they have come short to the glory of God. Father, we pray for Brother Joey that uh, the things that he says and does will be better in the future, that he will choose righteousness, 
that you will bless him and forgive him. Father, we're so thankful for Annabeth. We pray that you will bless her and the things that she said and that she's done are the contrary to your will. We pray, Father, that she'll do them no more, that she will seek the sunlight of your love and that she'll always walk in your footsteps. Father, we're so uh, thankful for that Olivia has come forward tonight. We pray, Father, that you will bless her, forgive her of her sins and those things that she was not a good example in or the things that she did or said that uh, were contrary. We pray, Father, that you will hold them against her no more and that you will help each of these three walk in the pathway of righteousness. Father, bless each and every one of them. Father, we reflect upon our own lives, every one of us in this room, realizing that once we were young and once that we made a lot of mistakes, and Father, we realize that when we came forward, you forgave us. Father, we encourage these young people uh, who have come forward, and we also encourage these young men who have come forward tonight. Let us in this service. We're so thankful, O oh God, for your example of righteousness and in your Son and in the forgiving power of your Son's blood. So forgive them. We ask it in Christ's name. Amen. Did not get the chance to partake of the Lord's Supper this morning. I'll be singing one verse of page 134. So you may come up and take the Lord's Supper. One verse of page 134. Together, let us sing. Oh, we come together. Oh, we Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this bread that represents our Son's body that was put on the cross for our sins. Please bless those who partake of this Lord in Christ, and we pray. Amen. Thank for your scope, which represents your son's blood. Bless it and bless those who partake of it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for all the blessings that you give us. Please help us to give back a portion. Let, help, let us give generously and not grudgingly, Lord, in Christ. And we pray, amen. Closing song this evening will be page 748. 748. Are there any more announcements? If not, we're singing first and third standard of 748. Together, let's sing. I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over.
Let us pray. <clears throat> Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this beautiful day that you have blessed us with to come out here and worship you. I pray that we'll take what we've learned today and use it in everyday lives. Lord, please be those who are sick and those who cannot make it. Uh, please be with the three that have come forward today. I pray that you will forgive them for everything that they've done. And Lord, please be blessed as we depart and bring us back to the next appointed time for you. So I send you Christ's name and pray. Amen. Amen.